one of the most common questions by viewers from Southeast Asia in the channel is when is Tesla coming to my country? In my experience, when international companies like Tesla set up in Singapore, they're looking not just to serve the domestic market, but to grow into a regional hub. Singapore is a small car market with less than 50,000 annual car sales and a total car population of 650,000 cars. The best-selling car brand in Singapore sells 800 cars per month. Gigafactory Shanghai produces 1,800 cars per day. Singapore makes up less than 1% of Southeast Asia's total car population. Today, let's talk about the countries that Tesla would expand to next in Southeast Asia. And I believe that the top two options would be Thailand or Malaysia. My name is Darren, and click subscribe to stay updated with more videos on Tesla. Let's start with Thailand. Thailand is Southeast Asia's largest car market with more than 18 million registered cars and 1 million cars sold every year. The Thai government's National Electric Vehicle Policy Committee is targeting 30% of all car sales to be EVs by 2030, which is at least 300,000 EVs sold per year. What makes Thailand interesting is that more than 50% of its car market consists of pickup trucks. Thailand's the second largest pickup truck market in the world after the US. The government encouraged the production and adoption of pickup trucks with low taxes and the form factor was practical for small medium businesses and Thailand's rural population, allowing them to haul more goods and people. The government has also subsidized diesel, which is used by many pickup trucks, to lower the cost of business in the country. I lived in Thailand for two years, and one of the downsides of diesel is that it increases pollution levels, especially in big cities like Bangkok. Because of how uniquely important the pickup truck segment is to Thailand's car market, a smaller Cybertruck form factor would be great for the country, especially outside of the big cities. Thailand has an 80% tariff rate on import source outside of ASEAN, so localizing production would be important for Tesla. Thailand has a large automotive industrial base and is sometimes referred to as the Detroit of the East. With a large pool of automotive talent and lots of land, maybe Thailand could be a gigafactory candidate one day. Next, let's talk about Malaysia, the country I grew up in. Malaysia is Singapore's next door neighbor and shares a land border. That proximity could be helpful for Tesla's management based in Singapore to support their regional expansion. Malaysia has more than 17.5 million registered cars and sells more than 600,000 cars per year. It also has the third highest GDP per capita in the region after Singapore and Brunei. Brunei is a smaller country with half a million population and 300,000 cars, half the total of Singapore. Malaysia's government is looking to pass a bill to make EVs tax-free in their 2022 budget. If this bill passes, it will be one of the more ambitious EV incentives in the region. Malaysia's 2022 budget will be finalized and approved by mid-December. The top-selling car in Malaysia for the past 15 years has been the Peroda MyV, a subcompact hatchback, followed by the Peroda Axia, another small hatchback, and finally the Peroda Beza, a compact sedan. These cars retail for an average price of 42,000 ringgit or 10,000 US dollars. Tesla will need to introduce a $25,000 compact sedan to play a larger role in Malaysia's car market and the country's currency does make imported vehicles relatively more expensive. There are no premium sedans or SUVs costing more than $35,000 in the top 10 of all vehicles sold in Malaysia in the past 10 years. Some would ask, what about other countries in Southeast Asia? I did not pick many of them because of a combination of lower purchasing power or lack of government EV support. Among all these other candidates, the most talked about country will be Indonesia. Indonesia is Southeast Asia's largest population by far, with 275 million people and 21 million registered vehicles. The challenge there is high import taxes and lack of strong EV incentives from the government currently. The government's latest plan is to go full electric by 2050, which is lagging behind many countries worldwide. Instead of being a Tesla car market, it could play a big role as a battery manufacturer. Elon has said that supply constraints in the short term will be semiconductor chips, and in the long term, it will be battery cells. Indonesia has large supplies of nickel and copper, which is used in lithium-ion batteries. Companies like LG Chem, CATL, and Tesla have expressed interest, and they are speaking with the government. I believe that if the EV bill passes in Malaysia's government, Malaysia stands a good shot to be Tesla's next Southeast Asia market. Otherwise, I think it will be Thailand. I believe that Tesla will expand to new markets when it's got the right products to address at least 50% of the total car market in the country. A key dependency for Tesla to scale in those markets will be a $25,000 compact sedan for Malaysia and a mini Cybertruck for Thailand. These new models could take years, 
In addition, import taxes, especially in Thailand, means that Tesla will need a localized production to make the economics work in these countries. All of this means to me that it may take Tesla two to three years before it launches to a new market in Southeast Asia. I could be wrong, and Tesla loves to move quickly. What do you think? What other factors should we be considering? Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.